94% of Canada's vast lands are unsuitable for farming. Only half a percent of the country is designated as Class 1 farmland. There are many things we humans can do, but we cannot make more farmland. It is a finite resource. And despite Canada being the second largest country in the world, we Canadians are losing the ability to feed ourselves. But fortunately for the people of the GTA, the largest tract of Class 1 farmland from Scarborough to the East Coast sits just northeast of Toronto in Pickering. And it is in public hands. It belongs to us. It belongs to you and me. Drought wipes out 90% of the U.S. corn food prices on the rise. In 1972, the federal government expropriated 18,600 acres of the richest farmland in Canada to build an international airport. They never built it. Hundreds of small farms vanished and a community was destroyed. But the land is still here. The size of Pickering Lands is enormous, 18,600 acres. Four of the five busiest airports in the world could all fit within the expropriated land. Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson, 4,700 acres, 92 million passengers a year. London's Heathrow, 3,000 acres, 70 million passengers a year. Chicago's O'Hare, 7,200 acres, 66 million passengers a year. And Tokyo's Haneta, 3,700 acres, 62 million passengers. 18,600 acres of expropriated Class 1 farmland four times the size of Atlanta, the world's busiest airport. In 1972, Transport Canada projected that 62 million passengers would pass through Pearson International by the year 2000. Today, Pearson, which is larger than Atlanta, only handles 33 million, but could easily handle double the number of passengers. It's time for some common sense. In the 1970s, the Pickering lands were a breadbasket for the Toronto area. The hundreds of small farms produced everything from wholesome milk, eggs, breads, cheese, to fresh fruit and vegetables. After the airport plan was cancelled, the expropriate land was leased out to industrial farmers. The hedgerows were destroyed to allow for easy access for heavy machinery and the barns were all torn down. Soil depleting cash crops such as corn, soy and grain, which all can be stored and can easily be grown on lesser grade soil, were planted on this class one land and have been growing there ever since. Once a thriving farm community, it slowly died over the years as people were forced off the land, their homes abandoned and boarded up, left to crumble and finally destroyed by Transport Canada. But the land is still here, and it provides a fantastic opportunity for the people of Toronto and the GTA, because it's the best farmland right here on the doorstep of Canada's most densely populated area. It is potentially a wonderful gift, but like any gift, it must be treasured or it'll be lost. The rising costs of energy combined with major droughts throughout the world have raised the cost of food and created a growing awareness of the value of locally grown food. We cannot compare a vine ripened tomato picked and eaten the same day to one shipped 2,000 kilometers and ripened in the back of some transport truck. When the price of oil goes up, so does the price of food. Current industrial farming practices so close to Toronto should be replaced by smaller family-run operation producing the freshest food on this rich land. It's about food. It's about real food. It's about fresh food. Not only is this about fresh food, it's about recreation. It's about bicycle and hiking trails. It's about access to the natural world. It's about birds, trees, water, and fresh air. 
This is all available right at your back door. Since 1972, the ethnic mix of Toronto has grown to reflect the whole world. This great potential garden could reflect that wonderful ethnic mix of greater Toronto. With bok choy grown next to carrots and cabbage, all fresh. Small, labor-intensive farms are not obsolete near urban populations. In Europe, there are 8.6 million farms close to major cities with an average farm size of only 33 acres. Over 560 family farms could be placed on the expropriated lands. And then it can get to the downtown core of Toronto in 30 minutes on the existing rail line. The big question is, what will make this happen? What will turn this land back into productive farms that can feed Toronto fresh, healthy food? The answer is, you can. Get involved. Call or email your MP, MPP, Municipal Council, or follow the links. Save the land and secure the future. Last month, corn and soybean prices exceeded records from 2008 when food riots erupted in Africa and Middle East. More than 60 food riots erupted worldwide when global costs reached over then all time.